Have you ever wished data input could look a little more like this and a little less like this? In today's video, I'm going to show you a quick and simple method to use a simple script that will allow you or anyone else using your Google Sheet to simply select a button here and then have all your data automatically move into your database. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's go to app script and create our script. And so we can update the name here. And so you can call it form script or script or whatever you like there. And then under function, we're just going to change this to on edit. Now, before we quit this video, I'm going to show you a modification on this. So that way you can use it on any account without authorizing it. But for the moment, we're just going to start with this and then we'll run through how to put the script together. So at the top of this, I'm just going to put together a little helper here, and this is a permissions restriction. And it just looks like this at only current doc. And what this does is it makes Google only request access to this particular Google sheet instead of multiple. All right, so in our on edit function, and so this is a specific name here. And this specific name is picked up by Google. And so every time the Google sheet is edited, it will try to run this function. And so we will have to authorize this before we move forward, but just be aware for the method that I'm about to demo, it needs to match this exactly. And then this E is just capturing the event or what changed. So let's go ahead and grab some stuff here. So we'll do let range equals event or E dot range. And then let's figure out the column and the row. So basically what I want to do is when this changes to submit, I want to grab the data from here and move it to our database tab. So we need to determine if the one that was edited was this row and column and if submit was selected. So let's go ahead and get our column. So range dot get column and let row range dot get row and let's get our value as well so range dot get value and so now that i have these i can use a simple if statement to determine if this criteria was matched and so in this case our column was e or number five and our row is four and then the value we're looking for is submit and so notice i'm using a double ampersand in between each condition. And so this is column equals to five and row equals four and value equals submit. And then I'm using a double equals, whereas if you look up here, a single equals assigns. So assigns this to range and this assigns the column to my variable called a call and so forth. And so that is how that works. And then double equals is comparing. And so the result of this instead of call equal to five is going to say is call equal five. If so, true, otherwise false. And then if statement compares all of these, since I'm doing and for each one of them, they all have to be true. All right. So if they're all true, then we can go ahead and grab our data and move it. And so if you saw our other video that did this without the on edit and use the menu function, then the rest of this is going to look very similar. Let's go ahead and program this out. So first of all, let's reference our spreadsheet. I'm going to assign it to a variable called SS. And so we use our spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. And then I'm going to get my form tab. I'll just call it form and SS dot get sheet by name form. And then I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and then get our database tab and change the name here. Sometimes it's easier to type things out. Sometimes it's easier to copy and paste. So different people approach that differently. All right, so we need to get our data from our form. So starting here and working our way down. And so this is E, so column five and row six is our start. So let's go ahead and get that. So I'll call this data, form.get range. And we'll start at row six, column is five. And I'm gonna get the last row because I wanna make this flexible in case we add more rows to our element. So get last row, and then I'm going to subtract them starting at six. And so I'm going to subtract five, so that way I equal out. And then I only need to get one column and then get values 
And then if you saw the original one, I'm using a method called flat to transpose because it's going to come out in uh, vertical and I want to transpose it to horizontal. And so that flat is the first step. And then let's go ahead and database get range. And we're going to get that database last row. I want to go down one, so let's go ahead and do that. And then first column, one row, and then let's just take the length of data. So data dot length. Now I'm going to do set values, and then I'm going to put that data, but I'm going to put it inside because it went flat and went flat, so it transposed it. So normally it'd be like this. What? data equals two and this would be our wrapper and then inside this would be row one row two etc and so when i do flat it gets rid of these and puts it in here and that's what that get flat or that flat method does now when i do the set values it still has to be like this and so that's why i'm putting these braces right here so then i can put data inside there just like that and then that will work correctly all right so we're almost there so the last thing we want to do is actually clear out this so it's ready for the next time so we're going to go ahead and just get this again but this time instead of get values i'm going to do clear content and then the last thing i want to do is reset this select a submit so e4 so form dot get range and this time i'm just going to instead of doing the numbers i'll just do e4 and clear content all right so that is it the script isn't very long isn't very complicated uh, unless you're perhaps new to app script in which case this may be very confusing but if you followed the steps here then this will work for you as well so on this on edit the we do have to authorize it before it's going to work but once we authorize it, this will run. And then I'm going to show you and demo this real quick. And then to finish this up, I'm going to show you how to modify this. So it'll work for anyone who uses the Google Sheet and they won't have to authorize it. So that'll help you in case you want to share it with somebody, but you don't want to have to have them explain it. Or maybe it's going to be a mobile device and you won't be able to authorize it from the mobile device. So let's go ahead and authorize it real quick. So we'll just hit run from this context. Now we will wind up with an error because the on edit is not designed to run from the script editor it's designed to run automatically whenever the google sheet is changed and so we're going to get an error this is perfectly normal but we're going to expect to happen because it's looking for something from e but when we run it in the script editor e is not defined now at this point however we should be able to enter something in here and it will go through to the database so let's just go ahead and put something in here so we could say Mr. Smith, and he lives at 123 Riverside. And we could say Los Angeles, California. And I don't know the zip offhand. We'll just leave the rest of this for now, but we have enough to demo. So what we're expecting to happen is when I hit submit, that this data will get added to the database, and then it'll get removed from here. So boom, it's gone from here. Let's check. Oh, look. There it is. All right, so perfect. So now to wind up this video, I'm just going to show you how to modify this. So that way you can use it. Um, anyone can use this Google Sheet without having to authorize the script. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to change this function name. So if you remember the beginning, I said this is a specific name that Google recognizes every time the sheet is edited. So let's just change it to something. Let's say check my sheet. Now at this point, if we do something here, and so let's just say um, Jane, and I do submit, nothing's gonna happen now because I changed the function name and Google isn't looking for this function. So as you can see, nothing happened. Let's go ahead and remove this for now. So what we need to do, and this is the part that'll make it work for anybody using your sheet, is over here under the clock, and triggers, we're going to add manually a trigger 
for what was picked up automatically. And so create a new trigger, you can do that through the button there, add trigger or create a new trigger. And again, we wanna make sure we check this function now. And then down here under event type, we're gonna do on edit. So once we select that, we can click save. And now what we've told Google is every time the spreadsheet is edited, run this function. And so now if we do this again, we'll just put Jane again here and click submit. This time it's going to run. So there we go. And there it is. So at this point, now you can share this Google sheet with anybody that you need to, and they won't have to authorize the script, but they'll still be able to use this form to enter data. All right, if this video is helpful for you, make sure to like and subscribe and check out my other videos for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.